Welcome back to the Mail Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Shivery, coming to you live. <laughs> Sorry, I got... We, we can keep going. I got totally distracted by a picture I saw on Twitter. That's why the late the late intro there. How are we doing, guys? <laughs> what was the picture? <laughs> it's uh, Sandy Lyle at, at Augusta, and he has suspenders on. I don't know if this is current or not. But is he's, he going low? <laughs> you got to think he's not going he's low. He's getting ready to shoot 88. <laughs> he's just... He was just getting his annual trip out of the way, his annual vacation to Augusta, Georgia. Do you think Sandy Lyle plays a practice round this week? or is he? <laughs> I, just, I feel like he should know the course oh, right now. I have so much respect for that old man. He's yeah. he's fantastic. He just goes out there for a, a nice leisurely round of golf at the, the, the finest golf course in the world. Yeah, I mean, and I goes home. I, I would love to say that I would handle it differently. Like I'd be like, you know what, guys, I'm not contending. I, I can't compete anymore. I'm just gonna I'm gonna bow out. But I don't think I would. Yeah, you win that tournament, you get a, a lifetime uh, entry. Yeah. As long as you want. He did, in fact, uh, he bogeyed one. Did so, he? Ah, jeez. Ah. You got to know one. At this it's point. playing long today. You got to think he's turning it around at some point, though. He's only 62. I thought he was like 80. Oh, really? Yeah. He's <laughs> He can still hit the ball. He doesn't exactly compete. He's yeah. like my grandfather. Okay, were we wrong? Remember we talked on Too Much Dip about the opening tee shot, the ceremonial? Mm -hmm. So it's just Jack and Gary. I thought Lee Elder was was hitting one too, but he I, apparently I he, he is just a, a ceremonial in name like uh, yeah only type deal. I was confused too. I saw highlights, I, highlights of it this morning. I, I like pulled it. open the yeah. app, which by the way, now on my home bar in my thumb zone. Look at you, man. Do you still? It's how much I fucking love the Masters. You're really dude. doing it. Do you have I a mean. trash love like rest of the screen still, or is it just? Yeah, it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've got some. I put some money on some guys yesterday. Yeah, anyway, the, the Masters has started this morning. You guys hear about this tournament, this golf tournament? A little bit of a little suspended due to play, uh, rather, rain. I don't know what I was just trying to say. Fuck off. Inclement yeah. weather. Suspended due to, to Red Bulls? Rebels? Red Bulls, yeah. Yeah, yeah someone spilled a bunch of Red Bull out of on the course. The course just fairway. flew off. <laughs> it was weird. Well, it's beautiful now. That I got <clears> the uh, the live feed up. Do you? Play play resumes in like 15 minutes. So it is. Real time. It's the sun out? It just, I mean, look at how sunny that is. Yeah. I've always wanted to go to the Masters. That I feel like that's pretty normal. But this week, I've I'm now like I have to go. Like, and I want to go in the next three years. And I know that's very difficult to obtain, but I I need to go. I've got to go. Like, I will I will pay a good amount of money to go if that's possible. Is the Masters like the adult version of like who do you know here to get in? Yeah, I mean they've got the lottery system with the tickets. Well, if you're dead. You know. Or if you're Dylan, you get in through the, the Natty Shack. Yeah. Natural Light. Yeah. That was the previous sponsor. Right. At a, at a previous company. Yeah, dude, just do what I just do what I did and just get a free a free trip to the Masters. Where did you stay? Lodging. We had a, a very nice situation. We had a house mm. about a, a quarter mile from the entrance. So we walked. It was, it was a nice yes. setup. Yeah, it's yeah. really a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, wow, man. The Masters. Good stuff. Sandy is, Lyle. I'm rooting for Sandy. If, uh, Freddie's going to make the cut. Yeah, I actually picked Freddie in my FanDuel pool. Because I, I had like $7,000 left, and Freddie was right there for the taking. Imagine going low in suspenders. You got to think you don't see that too often. Is our boy Eric Van Royen out there in joggers this week? South African. Yeah, he is. I like that guy. He's swaggy. He does have some swag. Um, watch, Bryson's about to tee off on one. Is he? Yeah. Okay. I, I hate how much I'm excited to watch Bryson. All right. We do have a mail in again. He's to, such though, a big guys. baby. He, he's just an overgrown baby. <laughs> yeah. He is. He can play linebacker, though. Well, he's probably a pussy. <clears throat> Klein, Klein will tell you, like, I mean, he's built like a freaking linebacker. No, I'm kidding. He wouldn't tell you that. Oh, he's pulling three wood. What a cuck. He's built like a, a guard that needs to put on 50 pounds. Like, he's thick, but he's not. He's not offensive line thick. He's like sure. high school guard. Yeah, that like, needs to get in the weight room. Like he's a four star, right guard, that coming out of high school, mm -hmm. and he's going to put on weight fast, and he's going to start moving guys around on the well, line. Well, what what is he six two, six one? He's he was tall. I he's six two vibes from him. I mean he he probably has similar measurements to that that uh, Kendrick Blackshire, the Duncanville linebacker, six two two forty five. He's not as cut though. He's not as yeah. cut. He, he didn't get any offers from like Alabama. No, but he went to Kentucky. You know, yeah. he's, he's gonna he's gonna have a fine. He's getting some looks. He'll probably be like a, a late round guy. Yeah, fourth or fifth round. Uh, according to 
the uh, the search, he's six one. Okay. And Brooch is six foot, which kind of surprises me. I have a hard time believing that. Yeah, I thought Brooch was like six three. He just looks big. He's a big lad. Yeah. Tony Finau, six four. That I believe. I yeah. bet you Tony Finau is a hot dude. I like Tony. But I'll track his package. I don't. Day. I don't have any uh, big boy stacks on him. But if he were to to obtain a <clears throat> Masters green jacket, I would enjoy it. You got to think his path to the green jacket is going to be easier than last year when he uh, broke his ankle on Wednesday. Two years ago. Was that two years ago? Dislocated yeah. it. Okay. And then and then relocated it via his own hand. Ugh. Still like bizarre. <laughs> the one of the most underrated moments. Like, dude, he put it back in and he played. I know that's probably similar to when your shoulder pops out of place and there's people who can just pop it back in, but your ankle, <laughs> as Ugh. a guy who played golf yesterday with a dude with a broken ankle. Why didn't Dak just do that? I think it was, di- I had a little more bit different. On. There was right. a compound fracture. Just saying. Yeah, Finau just, he jumped like four inches off the ground and landed on it. And then uh, he, he was backpedaling. Post, post hole in him. one. I would, imagine going hole in one to dislocate an ankle in 15 seconds. That's really embarrassing. Yeah. Mm. All right, guys. We have five questions today. Uh, before we get to those, though, the hotline number, it is 888-362-MAIL, M-A-I-L. That's 888-362-6245. You can also write in if you prefer. There's a link in the Twitter bio, at Mail and Podcast. You guys ready to jump in? We have two voicemails today. Like I said, five questions total. I think Brett might have a bonus one for I us. I sure do. I he, got two if you want. He has confirmed Damn. that he does. Uh, Dave, let's jump right in if you're ready. Dorn, Brett, producer Dave. After I saw that ref grab a handful of Sam Ellinger last weekend, I'm now curious. What's the most efficient way to get that caked up? Are there any better exercises than squats a guy should be doing? Been crushing the pelly lately, but I know that alone won't get me D1 thick. D1 thick, I like that. It definitely won't. Is this the chant? I feel like the chant, actually. He's in town. Is he? Yeah, I don't know if it's the keeps, chant. He keeps calling me. I don't know how he got my number. <laughs> but I feel like it's not because um, I think he would know better than us how to, He's already how to get He's caked. He's up. Look, you're asking this question to three guys um, who aren't really caked. No, Brett, you might, I don't I'm know. Not, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you're, you're really asking the wrong guys. Plus, we're not <clears throat> fitness professionals. So, um, Dave, how's this guy get that cake, man, besides well, squat? Well, man, he, you're he's asking the right squat, guy. Right? He says he's doing squats. Um the Pelly, I feel like, is not going to get you super caked. I feel like that's more of a quad type yeah, workout, which is. is dope too. It's mm-hmm. cool to have big quads or you quads know. and calves. Yeah, um, it hit it hits the cake area. Like Lance Armstrong was never known for being caked up. Like none of those tour guys are. I don't think bikers are, are in general known for being caked. Right, Just have insane quads. Insane quads. Right, uh, dude. Look, uh, lunges, lunges for sure. And then you got to do something that really is going to activate the glutes like um i don't know rdls look at rdls yeah. but the form make sure your form's good and then i don't know deadlift but like if you've never deadlifted before it's like it's weird getting into deadlifting late it's like unless you played like high school football and you, you trust your form be very careful but dude there's i mean dude if you're squatting you're squatting lunging and then some form of deadlift whether it's like trap bar deadlift or the hex bar some people call it hex I mean, those are all good. I don't know, man. If you go to like Lifetime, our gym, you just you, the, you watch, you see the Instagram models, and they do their their booty workouts, and it's just like it's very intense. Mm-hmm. Like they're over on the Smith machine, and they'll bring a bench over there, and they're doing like they really isolate the glutes on some yeah. of, some of the stuff they're doing. Yeah, they do like the hump the air glutes the, squeeze yeah. stuff thing. that I would need yeah. instructions on how to yeah. do if I were to attempt it. The that's a popular one now mm-hmm. where you lay the bar across your lap and you just kind of hump the air. Right. But I had a guy at Lifetime tell me that that was more of a hip flexor type thing. It was gonna it was gonna get you more girth in the hip. Now that's part of being caked up is is hips, I think. Okay. But I don't know, man. You asked the wrong pod. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> our le- legs are kind of like passe right now, though, right? Like you don't you don't need big legs. What do you I mean? Feel like big legs are always passe? like. They're not really in right now, right? Legs? Yeah. I don't think legs go out of style, man. Calves don't. I would rather like, have uh I would rather have bulky legs and like lean and cut upper body than probably any other build. Okay. I think. Yeah, yeah just you for functional be, purposes. You can't be disproportionate from like top down. Like that just looks dumb. You can't have a crazy big chest and no legs. Right. People just be like, Oh, it's sick leg day, dude. Like Yeah. But Dylan. 
Yeah, it's fair. I mean, I <laughs> Dylan unfairly get he doesn't really anymore. He used to get targeted for that. It's like, mm. oh yeah, like well, Klein would come up to me in the gym and be like, oh, not doing legs again today, huh? Like stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, Klein. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I feel like it, leave me alone, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, just keep squatting, but be careful, man. Like, I don't know how old this this young lad is, but like, don't be afraid to mo- do front squats. Something you know that, that lightens the load on your lower back. Get, I've stopped throw, doing back throw squats. Throw a dumbbell in each hand and just do one-legged like kettlebells. One-legged squats. Yeah. Like, step in front of you and do the pistol squat. I hate those, man. Those those. You see Shido really? on his uh, Instagram story doing some of that stuff. What's a pistol squat? It's just I think you stick your like left leg out and you just squat. You go, go as low as you can on your right leg. Oh, okay. So it's body weight basically, but it's very difficult to get to mm-hmm. parallel. I see. I. It's a good function. And if you're out of shape, it's borderline impossible. The yeah. leg workout that makes my legs the most sore the next few days is, without a doubt, weighted lunges mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Yeah. They absolutely just kill my legs. Yep. In a good way. I don't know if that you're going to get – you're not going to get a, a dumper by I do doing the Bulgarian lunges, I don't think. But it it really gets my legs going. So The Bulgarian lunge where you, you put your left foot – um, up on something like a bench, and then you lunge, so your foot's like up behind oh, you. Oh, yeah. So you can't use the back foot. To yeah, that's good. It gets them burning. Those Eastern Take Europeans, that. man, they know what they're doing. Oh hell yeah, Romanian. Yeah, there's some people in the gym just doing some exotic shit that I've never seen before. It's like, oh, okay. We'll yeah, see about it, uh, dude. It's it's not a gym guy. Kind of sucks though. Like, don't be the guy that's doing the <clears throat> like upside down pull ups. That's thing. the guy that I was immediately thinking of. Yeah. that is kind of annoying. Yeah. Don't yeah. be that guy. No, they're um, they're it's I know not to not that I'm like creeping, but like the if you want like the late the girls who are doing the 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 squat stuff, uh, they go hard. Like they can squat more than I can. I can't squat a lot. That's not saying much, but um, oh, there are some some ladies in there moving weight. The caked up ones, you're like, dude, okay, that it makes sense why you're caked up. You're you're squatting like. You're repping out 190 pounds, which feels like a lot for a 120-pound lady. Sure. I'm getting 2-H. I'm sorry, guys. That's fine. It's all right, Dad. One thing that's important, though, that you have to remember, recovery. Yes. And that, my friends, is where ritual comes into play. Mm, look at that segue. Ritual. You're a professional. Do you even know what's in your multivitamin? Do you even know? I know y'all do because y'all are ritual boys. Right. But I'm just asking, like, the, <clears throat> the general public. There are some trash ones out there. Sugars, GMOs, synthetic fil- fillers, artificial colorants, all that stuff. Not to mention animal byproducts like sheep's wool and gelatin from hooves and hides are all ingredients you could find in a multivitamin, but not Ritual. It's not your typical multivitamin. It's clean, vegan-friendly formula is made with key nutrients in forms your body can actually use. No shady extras. We're all using this. We always we always rave about like how we like opening the bottle and getting that wave of mint. Um, love that, but just like the, the comfort of knowing that, like, I'm going to be recovered. I went hard yesterday. I need something that's going to give me, you know, vitamins, nutrients ritual. Does it? It's fantastic. I love it. Good. I love you look, it. Uh, yeah. And I'm looking, I'm looking at your hair and I'm like, man, how much of this, uh, this Brett thick hair is, is because of his ritual use potentially a little bit. We don't, uh, know. I don't know. We don't know. It's formulated with key nutrients, including vitamin D three to help fill gaps in the diet. Their fresh tasting, delayed release capsules are designed to dissolve later in less sensitive air, excuse me, in less sensitive areas of the stomach, so you can take them with or without food. Um, I, love, I love the subscription thing they have going on. That's the most important part. Like here. you, with stuff like vitamins that you take every day, you don't always think like, oh, it's time to renew, time to time to order again. So just you can count on it showing up to your doorstep. Same time every month. It's fantastic. And they've got a one-of-a-kind visible supply chain, so you'll always know where the nutrients come from thanks to that. That's huge. No one else is doing that. Makes it easy. Like Dylan said, the subscription, uh, you know, you go to the you go to the store to buy vitamins, and you're looking, and the, the one you liked from a long time ago, they don't even sell anymore. Now you got a new one you like, and it's just there at your doorstep. You don't have to worry about it. That's right. And guess what? Go to ritual.com slash randy and our listeners are going to get 10 percent off during your first three months again ritual.com slash randy start your ritual today 10 percent off for your first three months thank you dave let's do a voicemail 
You want to do a voicemail? Let's yeah, do a I'm voicemail. Ready. Hey, what's up, Mail and Gang? This is Ethan from Atlanta here. Been going to a lot of weddings recently. Was wondering what you think your most overrated wedding song is. For me, it's definitely The Wobble. I think that song is trash. Anyway, love the pod. Love to hear your thoughts. Bye. Man, great question. Overrated, overrated, wedding, overrated song. wedding song. I think this is going to get controversial. And the first time I heard The Wobble, it was at a, it was at a wedding. And... There were 30 people who knew the choreographed dance to the wobble, and I had, I didn't know what was going on. I was so confused about how many people knew about something that I was completely unaware of. Um, and ever since then, I've been kind of annoyed by that song. It's not a good song. In fact, I— Wobble with it, David. I wasn't even ready to call it a wedding song, but now that I think about it, I've seen it at multiple weddings. I'm more of a cha-cha slide guy. If we're going to if we're going to do choreographed dance, let's do that. Or an electric slide. What's uh, what's the other one? The one I'm gonna talk about a lot is it the electric slide, electric slide, cha cha slide, cupid shuffle, cupid, cupid shuffle. shuffle. That's the one. That's that, the one that was more that's popular. The one I yeah. go off on that one. You better watch out. I think Give I'm realizing how much I hate wedding music. I'm yeah. done like running through the list of songs, and I'm like, oh, that song sucks. Let that me, song sucks. Let me throw out anything by Journey. Overrated. In in a wedding environment, it's 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 just it. I don't know. Doesn't fit. Don't stop it's just believing. a little. Don't stop believing. It's just a little corny for me, in in that venue, mm -hmm. and it's it's just probably because it's just overdone. It kind of throws off the like you because you're either like <clears throat> dancing, or like playing shout. Yeah, and it's kind of in between. It doesn't really fit anywhere. Yeah. Besides, people just like yell it. How do you feel about shout at a wedding? Oh, I love it. Yeah, shout is it's, it's an all time. It's it's it's, it's cliche. It's but I love it. Yeah, you play that song at a wedding after the drinks are going, and just watch what happens to the dance floor. People will just yeah. It's usually an ender. It's it's like an upset in, in college football, man. It, that's you a, storm in the field, but it's a dance floor instead. I found that's a polarizing song. Some people hate shout because they're like, really? oh, it's overdone. It I, is overdone. It, absolutely, I mean, but it's it's a it's a necessity. Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. there are some. I've I've been to weddings where they were specifically asked to not play shout. Dude, a little bit softer now, Dave. It's maybe well, it's just because no. they can't get low. Get like, low, trash. I'll, I'll go all the way to my back. I don't give a fuck, dude. I'll yeah. just do it. Somebody always does, and you're like, Dan, yeah. please, like, get up. Yeah, like, I, don't, I don't. You don't need that. Well, you know, they did that in the movie. You know, they got down all the way. Yes. You seen Animal House? You heard about this movie? Love it. Yeah. You heard about this one, Brett? No. Probably didn't age well, but haven't seen it. Is that is that a college guy? You it you've sure really is. never seen Animal House? No, I have to. I'm just doing that. <laughs> I don't, dude. I never know with you, doing a bit. freaking guy. <laughs> I bet Randy hasn't. Didn't age well. Randy yeah, you're right. Party. There was um, there was an, an underage young lady in the in the in the film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was. Who engages in certain activities? Oh. Oh yeah, there really was. Yeah. And then she gets left in a shopping cart. On her parents' front doorstep. Which seems very, very like not what you do. No, no. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Yeah. What else? You got any other songs, Dave? That are, yeah. Um, some of the not not uh except not Earth, Wind, and Fire, but fam, uh, we are family. Oh, we. Are oh God, dude! Good and like call. all the all the aunts Terrible. and cousins get out there. Good you're just call. Like, oh, okay. Any get out of here. Any like uh, I this is gonna get me. Any song from like the seventies or eighties that like old people like. I just, I can't <laughs> like stand. like what, <laughs> like like Earth Wind and Fire or like We Are Family or like ABC. It was the Jackson Five. Like I just can't. Yeah, Jackson I, Five just, like, is kind of no. dope though. ABC, it's like stop. I got love for the Jackson Five. <laughs> I just don't. Cindy Lauper, like no. Girls just want to. Yeah, <laughs> some of them are necessary because like if you're at a wedding and like it's. A, Let's say the bride and groom are introverts, or, or or like it's a very reserved group, and like nobody's really out on the dance floor. Well, you might have to throw a, a cupid shuffle in there to get people out there. Yeah, and then you hope that people will, will stay out there. Because I've been I've been to like one wedding where nobody really went on the dance floor, and I felt kind of bad. I was like, damn, that sucks. Nobody's out there getting it. It wasn't a dry wedding. I went out there and just fucking hit the nay nay. 
yeah. for like 30 minutes. And they're like, dude, you got to get out of here. I heard you're hitting the quantum. They're like, you weren't day. even invited to this wedding. We don't know you. <laughs> I'm just trying to get it going, guys. Dude, you weren't you were in uh, basketball shorts. What do you, where'd you come from? <laughs> dude, they didn't, even know what the, they didn't know what the quan was when you hit it. No, they're like, dude, is, they're did like, you just invent that? I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, when you, uh, when you DJ my wedding at a future date and you play Sweet Caroline or uh, – or uh, staying alive by the Bee Gees. It's just nothing wrong with Bee Gees. I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah, you like Bee Gees? No. Sweet Caroline. It hits though, man. Nothing <sighs> wrong with Caroline. Uh, it's a corny but song. It's a very corny. Pe- song. Fucking Fenway. Why people just ruin? Are like ruining that song? Yeah. Like we get it. It's dope, and you can all sing along to it. Everyone knows the hook to that song. Get it? But just calm down a little bit. Ba, ba, ba. You're running it into the ground. But you know what song does not get old? The twist. Well, <laughs> when you hear that first note, it's like, oh, it's fucking on. Everybody, yeah. everybody, yeah. everybody. Like, no, don't bring your drinks on the dance floor. You're like, yeah, fuck, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, dude. That's, it's the time to take the tie off and, and put it around your head. You yep. know? Yeah, yeah. Like, Dave, why did you just motherfuck off. the the mother of the, of the bride? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she told me. She told me I could bring my drink. Double Ooh. birds. Why is he double burden out there? You yeah, know, you yeah, make me. It really, is, it. it really is oh, a fantastic what? song. Oh, just writing. In the nights. Sitting by the doctor. The Did I get it right this time? Because I just incorrectly credited them for a song. There's like, Otis. He loves us. <laughs> oh, man. Any other ones before we move on? Superstition. I think no. Otis Day is the band in um, Animal House. Which I yes. like. I kind of like their version. Otis Day? That's right. Yeah. Am I wrong I about? Otis, now I'm questioning myself, man. I don't know. Otis Redding. Otis Redding. Um, he did. Okay, he did. Sitting by the dock of the bay. Yep. These Sitting arms of mine. Maybe. He, maybe I'm just, I'm just. Oh no, he did. I don't think he ever did a version okay. shout. I'm high. I, I'm very, very. Open I'm going to stop throwing out. I'm an idiot. I'm going to stop throwing out the name Otis Redding because I don't really know what what all he's done. So I'm going to shut up. Anyway, great song. You want to know who did the original yeah. version of Shout? Oh, the Isley Brothers. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Did you have control over your, your wedding playlist? Um, Weddings playlist? Yes. I think, I think I submitted a few must plays. Okay. And then just kind of left, left, and maybe in a few do not plays, and left the rest up to him. Got it. Mine came out, my wedding was at a time when, like, there was a lot of, Hip hop was in a place where there was a lot of choreographed dancing, mm. so I put like I had a couple of those songs in there. But my guy, who I really liked, he threw in some more in there. So before you know it, like there's about there's about like uh, thirty people out there trying to trying to hit the whip, mm-hmm. followed by the nene. Right, oh. and it was probably I'm really glad that more cameras weren't out. Watch me whip. Would, Will yep. did. Will at one point went live and just put the camera on me out there, and I looked. I was like, "Why? Why you do? Why you broadcasting me at my wedding? Like I'm, I'm out here trying to fucking get it." Did you got to put the D man online? Because Dylan wasn't there. He Dylan, he's like, "Hey, can you, can you just go yeah, live?" For I was Cupid, Cupid shuffling down the road a little bit. <laughs> to the left, to the left. <laughs> How many times do you think that Drake song is gonna get played? Which one? Oh, the Tootsie uh, Slide. Yeah. That's the new one. Yeah. Well, you know what's going to happen is, is weddings are going to become TikTok fests now. Uh, like all the, the bridesmaids mm. who all do TikToks in their dorm rooms and shit, th- th- that's going to be every wedding song, and they're just going to dance. That's the new wave. Yeah. And I hate it. Gross. I hate it. I'm Gross. Yeah, you're right. Damn. What do weddings look like in 2021, man? I go, although people have been getting married this year. Randy's been to like six weddings in the I last know. month, which is weird. We should get Randy an antibody test. Dude, you literally sure. get tested for free. Yeah. How about that? It's free. All right. You want to do another one? Let's do the next one. Horny alert. Uh-oh. Whoop. Hey, friends. I have a quick question. My boyfriend and I have been together for a little over three years. This summer, we moved in together, and things are going pretty well, except we almost never have sex. Like one, maybe two times a week and never more than once a weekend. We're young, and I know most couples have problems with this once they have been together forever. So I don't know. I'm nervous. That's becoming a problem so early in the relationship. Every time I try to bring it up, he gets super defensive and upset with me. So I haven't brought it up since last year. What should I do? I'll shut up and listen. Bye. 
Um, all right. Look, I want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. She says maybe one or two times a week and then like once over the weekend. Is she does that mean two to three times a week? I think it means two to three times a week. Okay. That's the way I read it too. Um look if you've been if you've been with your boyfriend for over three years and you're having sex two to three times a week, uh that's pretty that's kind of a lot of sex, I think. Yeah. <laughs> right? How many times how many so. times a week? Two to three times a week? And they've been together for over three years? Yeah, I feel like you're having more sex than most. You, yeah. You are having more sex than most. You're mosting more more than most. Well she did how much are they mosting? That is the question. Yeah, we need we need, need to, to get know. to the, the mosting numbers. Um, I need to see some to next look, gen stats. You're trying to have sex like every every day. I feel like that's so. That's look, pe- there are people are out there doing that, having daily sex. I mean, yeah, I went to college too. Not me. I'm kidding. I did go to college though. Randy liked that fucking... one. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would. This is this shouldn't be a concern for you. No. Two to three times a week is pretty gr- is pretty great. I think that's that's well, kind of a wheelhouse. It's not. Yeah, I don't think it's not weird. It's not abnormal, but like, same time, like if she's feeling undersexed, is that a word? If she's feeling like it's not enough, then I mean, I guess it is an issue to her, right? So she needs to. I don't know what she needs to do. <laughs> Fuck email. No, you're podcast. right, but she's uh, she's concerned about this, and I'm saying she shouldn't be concerned because these are these are good numbers that they're putting up. Yeah. Right. I mean, obviously, if you're maybe he's got low T. If can't you're hang. not if you're not satisfied sexually, there are other means of satisfying yourself you know don't look at me like that what are you doing? i'm, talking I'm, about, only, I'm laughing because i know what randy's doing i'm talking about masturbation randy you hear about this thing it's I'm talking about masturbation yeah i'm sure, sure. she's it's a healthy it's a healthy outlet she's it's probably healthy familiar outlet. yeah I'm, I'm sure she is i'm sure she knows about it if she, um, I was just, if she if she wrote in with a horny alert she, yeah i think she I think her takeaway from what we're trying to say, but doing so very poorly, is the is that she shouldn't be concerned about this. You know. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they're, they're doing fine. If he's offensive about it, maybe it's because he's he's doing all that he can to keep up with with your sexual desire, your mm-hmm. pace. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, God. maybe his stroke game's just weak. He seems to me like his stroke game is fine. I don't know. I mean, you, you see the stats. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't be concerned. But if it really does bother you and you're un, you know, unfulfilled, then you you got to bring it up with them. Yeah, I think it's case by case basis. But it sounds like, it, but he, if he gets super defensive, I don't, I don't know. I don't know yeah, what you do. I don't know either. <laughs> like, I don't know what guy out there is like. Nah, I'm I'm good. I feel like, but like I... consistently, like nah, I'm good. You Wait, know, what like do you maybe, mean? like he's turning away. Oh, sex with his girlfriend. Yeah, if he's turning away your sexual advances. That might be a little bit different, you know. We we should consider that. Unless it's been like four days in a but row. But if it's like, like if you're just waiting for babe. him to initiate and he does it two to three times a week, right? That's pretty normal, I think. Pretty great, yeah. actually. But if he if you're making moves and he's just resisting, okay, that's potentially problematic, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you might need to get to the bottom of it and see what's going on. And that's gonna require. Sounds like he needs to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Of what? This quandary. Oh, okay. I completely lost my train of thought. You were you were on one though. Yeah, I was going off. <laughs> <clears throat> um, you got to have what's probably going to be an uncomfortable conversation, but it's a, a necessary one. Sure. Get your thoughts out there. Let them know how you feel. I think that's totally fair. Okay. Totally let's, fair. Let's see the next one, Dave. It's a voicemail. Hey y'all. Um, so I've been dating my boyfriend for three years now. We've been living together for a year and a half, and. Um, we just were talking about how one of his friends got engaged and I was like, you know, oh, I wonder who's going to be next. Is, is it going to be us? And he told me he doesn't know if he wants to spend the rest of his life with me. Um, I'm kind of shaken because I didn't realize that, you know, that wasn't a given after we moved in together, but like, um, is this normal or am I just overreacting? Um, there's also an age difference in 25. He's turning 29 in january so i don't i just uh, that's my advice thanks bye it's a tough one this is tough that's a, that's a tough one. um i i hate to hear that you that he's saying this after being with him for for over three years and he's 29 um it, it doesn't look good 
sorry to say that it just doesn't it doesn't sound good it doesn't pass the the eyeball test here um if y'all have been together for five months and he says it like yeah he's not sure yet mm-hmm. but at this point he knows he knows everything about you he knows what it's like to live with you he knows what it's like to be in a committed relationship with you for over three years and if he's still saying that that's a problem agreed um he should he should know by this point if he sees a long-term longer term future with you and it, since he doesn't I don't know what, how you, what you do from here, but maybe you just have a sit down with them and be like, look, if this isn't going to advance you know, to marriage, if that's what you want, or just a long-term, whatever, you need to know so you can find what you're looking for elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Silver lining, she's 25. She's been together with this guy for three years. At 25, if, if this does progress to like you're looking for something else at some point, it's going to take a while, but... She's in inner prime. Yeah, she is. She has. She knows what a relationship is like. She knows what a uh, a long term committed relationship is like, and she she's she's got the tools to to find something that she's looking for in the prime of her her dating life. Yeah, she's gonna be just fine. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know it doesn't seem that way all the time because like, oh, I just wasted it. You, you look at it like you wasted three years of your life. You didn't, but. Mm-hmm. Um, She's gonna, be, yeah. She's gonna be just fine. Like you, you still have a lot, a lot of life to live. And you're, God, you're so young, twenty five. My God, like, it's like your age, Brett. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, you have a lot to figure out still. You're gonna, you're probably gonna date a few more guys before you finally settle on somebody that, uh, not not settle, but find someone that you're, you know, you have a long term future with. So you're fine. Just uh, get Absolutely. out of this one because unless. Have a conversation with him first. I'm not just saying, like, pull the plug right now. I'm just saying, have a conversation with him. And if he's still like, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to be with you forever, then, okay, you got to move on. Mm -hmm. Because it clearly sounds like that's what you want out of a relationship. Agreed. Long-term future. Agreed. And, uh, yeah, this doesn't sound good. After three years, if he's saying that, that's bad. Yeah. Actually, if he's saying that to you after three years, he's kind of, he's probably expecting you to maybe tap the brakes Mm -hmm. a lot. Slam the brakes, maybe. Right, like he's he's trying to give you an out, basically, is what it kind of sounds like to me. Like he knows that this is going to lead to a bigger conversation. You know? Yeah, I think you're. Uh, I think you're right. Okay. I think you're right. Have a conversation. I'll t- we're always there for you if you need to talk. Uh, yeah. Let's go. I'll have a conversation about honey. Oh, Dave. How about that? Imagine this. You make a list of the gifts you're going to buy for the holidays, and then. Somebody randomly gives you the money to help buy one. Sound good? Well, that's what Honey's doing, okay? They're helping pay for $1 million worth of gifts. How about that? I want to interject something real quick. Interject. Uh, No disrespect to the rest of our sponsors. I love them very much. Honey's one of my faves. Ooh. Honey's one of my faves. They're fantastic. It's They got your back all the time. They're out here saving us money. You're probably wondering, is this the same Honey that automatically searches for promo codes online? Yeah. It is. It is. You forget you have it, but it just reminds you every now and then. Like, hey, guess what, pal? We're saving you uh, five dollars, eight dollars. Doesn't matter. Doesn't oh, matter. Sometimes I've got thirty percent. Thirty percent off. You're still Ooh, saving. To honey. With honey, you can also make a list of all the holiday gifts you want from certain stores, and honey will email you when the price drops on anything on your list. How about that? Mm. That's cool. I haven't I haven't used that function yet, but I need to. Just add honey to your computer, create a free account, and throw some holiday gifts. On your drop list for a chance to win. Honey will randomly select winners and give them the money to help buy something on their list. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna throw some stuff in there. I might be gifting my parents something nice. Maybe like a Vitamix. Maybe I'll throw that on the drop list. Ooh. Vitamix are traditionally a little expensive, but if I can get that thing at a lower rate, I got to do it. It's a great investment. Maybe a Bluetooth speaker for a loved one. How about that, Dylan? Not only does it, it set them up. Sounds great, David. No, it sets them up. For their financial future. Yeah. <laughs> Does not depreciate. Uh, no purchase is necessary. You need a PayPal account to redeem the prize. And it's only valid in the United States. This giveaway will end uh, December 21st, 2020. That's this year. But check it out. Use Honey regardless. It's awesome. We love it. Thank you, Dave. We do the next one? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, it's the me. last one until Brett's bonus question. It's kind of a long one. Sorry, Dave. Jump right in, though, when you're ready. Here we go. Hey, Dorn and panel, 
My girlfriend and I recently took a COVID escape to a national park. Her friend Melissa lives nearby and decided to come up for a night. I had met Melissa several times before. She has, to be polite, a distinguished sexual resume and has always been flirty with me, but nothing over the top. That's a funny way to put it. A distinguished mm. sexual resume. <laughs> But when we get back to the hotel room, we're drinking, smoking, and she starts towing the line. She strips down to her underwear, is dancing up on me, and kept forcing overly sexual conversation topics. When I booked the hotel, I thought it would just be the two of us, so I got a king-size bed. No problem. We can all fit. Okay. When we finally go to sleep, my girlfriend is in the middle. At some point, Melissa moved to my side of the bed. As often happens to me in the middle of the mornings, my flag was raised to full mast. I think he's talking about morning wood there, Whoa. Dave. Melissa started grinding against me and eventually reaches over, grabs, and starts stroking. This mm. is so this is when I wake up, realize what's going on, and quickly turn back toward my girlfriend to break contact. When we all get up in the morning, Melissa acts like nothing happened. My question is, what do I do? I think I should tell my girlfriend what happened soon, but do I tell her everything? Am I going to catch some blame here? Should I go full throttle and try to <laughs> position a threesome? Okay. Please help me out. I have no idea how to handle the situation. Don't try to position. Don't try to get a threesome out of this, buddy. No, yeah, don't. <laughs> That's not the move. Nope, nope. <clears throat> wow. When they got back to the hotel and Melissa was being mm. flirty and mm. sexual and getting down to her undies, where was uh, the uh, the girlfriend? Was yeah. she just, like, sitting there on the couch, like, watching it happen? I'm a little I, confused. I feel like he would have noted if she would, had been asleep or something. Right. So she probably, I mean, it, I'm she want, probably had an idea that I'm something wondering like this if was going to happen. Like, if the girlfriend is like sort of low key, horny for Melissa, sort of okay with what's going on, is what I'm trying to say. I think, like maybe he mentioned a threesome might be on the table. I'm not saying go for the threesome. I'm saying, is the girlfriend sort of into what's what's happening here? You know, I mean, I, she's putting. Uh, I'm not. I don't. First of all, I don't think this guy's to blame. It no, at no. All. As long as she's as long putting, as what he's saying is on the up and up, and he didn't like, yeah. you know, encourage it. As long, I, I think that, I feel like she's put him in this position, like, she. I mean, which one? Yeah, good, good point. Yeah. Like the shared bed thing. That's that's we. That's weird anyway. Share a, like, your friend's gonna come meet us, and we're gonna just share a king size bed. Yeah. No one, no one does that. Bring throw, throw down a blanket and sleep on the yeah, floor. I'm presuming that there are these are adults. You. Get your own room, yeah. or if you have a couch, I don't know, man. <clears throat> that's why it's that's why it's a little bit fishy to me. I'm not I'm not trying to like blame anybody here. It's a little bit fishy to me. It seems like this. Is she, uh, what's the best way to say this? I don't think he's surprised by what happened here. I think it's it was low key expected in a way. Maybe it says that he was kind of asleep when it started. Ha when she started doing that thing to him, maybe she <laughs> was like in a. Non awake state to move over. Okay, when she moves over to your side of the bed, that's, that's weird. You, that's when you gotta. That's when. You that's the, when you need a flag. Like, yes, you throw the flag and you, yeah. you you call a timeout or whatever, yeah. whatever kind of sport analogy you want to use. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's when you put a stop to things. But all right, Melissa, you gotta chill, girl. I, I, I'm, we're not doing this because if you move the, if you move to his side of the bed, that only means one thing. Right. And even if like, how did she do that? She had to have gotten up and walked around. She yeah. surely didn't like. Right. Yeah, she didn't. Yeah, she didn't log roll, roll over, roll the, over squad. the top of them. Right, you're you're already in a weird spot because like when your girlfriend wakes up and all of a sudden Melissa switched switched positions. Like, huh? What happened like, here? Hey, hang on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> to answer his first question, um, well, I guess maybe it's the second one. He says, "Do I tell? Do I tell her what happened?" Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no question. Like there. morning of. Dude. You ha Oh yeah. Like yeah. As soon as Melissa is oh, is gone, like hey, this is what happened last night. Who's, I got it. Is it his friend <clears> or her friend? Oh, her friend. Okay. Her friend. So you you have some leeway there. Yeah. If, if that it was, was his friend, I mean, this oof. is a different deal. Because, yeah, this is different. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't think the girlfriend's going to be too surprised about what you tell her. But you got to tell her. Yeah. And say, I didn't initiate anything. I, I You know, I didn't. I woke up with a, with a boner. It just <laughs> happens. Guys, That's boners happen. One does. That's right. Boners happen. Everybody yeah. knows that. Um, and uh, when she started uh and using his word here stroking mm -hmm. uh you stopped you put a stop to things yeah yeah I th honestly when i was reading through this i was like oh no this is gonna go a step further yeah and i was like oh but it didn't yeah it didn't credit uh, yeah credit to this guy for breaking contact yeah but when you you know your girlfriend is he literally right next to you <laughs> he gave her that swap 
he did bear paw her. Flapper. It's a good one, Dave. Yeah, you got to tell her. You got to come clean. Don't push for the threesome. <laughs> don't yeah, don't do that. Do that. It's a, unless she, your girlfriend, is like. But what if we threesome? She has to initiate. That. I feel like she had her chance. <laughs> she should yeah, have been very it, much so. If it was going to happen, it was going to it was going to happen that night. That's true. But if That's she true. does, if the girlfriend does mention the threesome thing, I don't know. I'm not a threesome guy myself. It sounds terrifying to me, really. Terrifying? Yeah. I just I don't want to be. I don't that know if guy. I'm like scared of it, but it, I'm not. I'm not like actively seeking seeking one out. I feel like I'd be I'd be so nervous. I don't know. <laughs> No interest. Why don't you be nervous? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not a threesome guy. Okay. All right. You got a tough act to follow there with that bo- with this bonus question. It's better be good. <laughs> well, it's about Dylan and threesomes. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, how do you? This is my bonus question, by the way. How do you execute a friendsgiving as a guest without being too much of a tryhard? Have you been invited to a friendsgiving? Yes. Okay. In Houston. Yes. Okay. I don't want to be over like you can't be like oh here's the Rand, like Randy said here's like the casserole and this and that like why how not? do you how do you go mid level so why not so you're not like I don't want to why be like, trying why, why don't we just want to flex on people I don't want to flex on people why not because I'm not I'm not the I'm I'm like I'm a guest of a guest if okay if some dude I didn't know very well showed up to my friend's giving and he just blew me away by his cooking skills I'd be like we got to get bread here again next year that really? was fucking dope yeah I don't think there's anything wrong with with going hard in the paint you're not like this fucking guy no man no. It's Unless food. Like, Dude, yeah. everyone loves food. Good okay. food. Okay. Come on. Dang. I get it. I was gonna be like, I was gonna bring a six pack, but Oh no. You gotta you gotta what? bring a dish. You're gonna bring a six pack of beer? Well, like we'll, we'll we will bring a dish as oh, in Caroline yeah. and I. Oh. But I we'll we'll bring like a fucking buffalo chicken dip or something. Not like Okay. I mean uh, I mean, is it a Super Bowl party or <laughs> I don't know, Dave. We haven't decided yet. Bring a, a That's why dish. I'm asking you guys. Bring a dish and um, a bottle, of, a decent bottle of wine, twenty dollar bottle of wine. Okay. You know, twenty dollar bottle of wine. It's you can get some good wine out there for yeah. twenty bucks. Yeah. Mayomi. Mayomi. I bought a uh, a bottle of wine on election night. I, I just decided to kind of kind of stunt. So I bought like a forty five dollar bottle of wine. Look at this fucking guy. And it blew me away. Really blew me away. Drop don't, the drop the name. Don't know what it was. Oh, okay. I got to go back and uh, <coughs> shout to South Lamar Spirits Wine and Spirits. Good spot. Okay. Good, Good question. Good Do you question, have any? any go off. I've Dude, never been to a friend's giving. You need what? To go I've never even been invited to one. I don't have any friends. Oh, really? Damn, that's sad, Dave. I know. Dang. I've been to one, I think. Uh, question number two. What future technology? Just everybody hit their blunts real quick. What future technology that's like in the realm of possibility in the ne- in like the in the next two say in the next two decades are you most looking forward to? Autonomous vehicles being just commonplace, being all over the road. You just want to hop in the hop in the cab, <clears throat> yeah, and just wherever. Yeah, I actually think that eventually no one's going to own their own vehicle. Oh, I think it's just going to be like an Uber system of autonomous vehicles, and then you can schedule pickups. Like every morning i got to go to work at, you know, 7.30, and there'll be a car just at your doorstep waiting for you to hop in. I think that's where we're kind of where okay. we're headed. You know, that's not any anytime soon, but I think it'll be cool, man. So you just want to hop in. You have a schedule. Like nobody – there's no traffic at that point. Why don't yeah. you just do flying and cars? Accidents will be I – don't, I don't know if that's feasible. Flying cars? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm most looking forward to. Really? Yeah. I think it's going to be here sooner than make later. Make that traffic grid three dimensional, Dylan. Well, that's what that's what uh, Elon's trying to do. That's why he's going underground with it. I'd rather I'd rather go the other way, though. No, I hear you. <laughs> I want I the you. hypersonic light rail stuff I, where I can get to I can go you Austin to, go Dallas. to Dallas in like an hour, oh, like that'd, twenty minutes. That'd be so so. Go sick. watch a ball game. Go watch a cowboy game. That'd Come be sick. Home. Be home and it wouldn't be like a big deal. That's that's all I really want. Yeah. And I Imagine. think we'll have it in 15 years. If you could do that Ooh, to Dallas, I don't know about 15. People would just get ripped on the train too. Oh yeah, people would start drinking in, in autonomous vehicles too. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, hooking up and shit too. Really? Yeah. Think about it. What else you yeah. gonna do in there? Read a book? Fucking dork. I would just scroll Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, I guess you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking nerd vibes over here. <laughs> <laughs> Brett's over Dude. here reading a, a novel. Yeah, he's got a I'm Grisham like, I, novel. I, no, I Dylan and I are over here just 
<laughs> Eiffel Tower. No, I'm kidding. Oh, come on. Yikes. He said he's not a threesome guy. Not a threesome guy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, flying cars, huh? Yeah. I pew, think, pew, pew. I think flying sound. cars, are, are, they're closer than you think, like Dave said. Really? Yeah. I, I think drone technology is, is advancing too rapidly to not have a, like a human drone. It's not going to be like a flying car like you, you right. pop, pop the family in, but it'll be like you have one – you can like order a human. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like Dylan said, there's going to be a fleet of, of human drones like, that you can like order. It'll land at your house. You hop, you hop in. <laughs> is that like through Ikea? I don't know. And you just punch in where you want to go yeah. and it's going to just drop like, you. you? Well, you probably have a hub system. So Austin would have like one like big lander or two big landers. That, you know. When you say it out loud, it really – Lander, like a like a parking lot. Okay. That everybody goes to instead of like dropping people off at Starbucks on the corner. Like downtown would have a big parking lot. That's like the Austin. Thing. Man, wouldn't that be wild if we were just flying around everywhere all over the city? I w- it would be tight. I would love that. Imagine you just like hop over to Lake Travis and be like home in five minutes. What kind of thrust are these things going to use? Like a dr- like a drone? Like a propeller? y'all just, yeah, keep, just y'all like, extend this. I'm gonna pee. Dave's got a pee pee. Yeah, Pro- like propellers. Yeah. Like you have the, oh, man, he's, he's slamming doors out. He's not happy about Jeez, that was a, that was the Micah moment. Yeah, you just have like, uh, like uh, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of the thing from Spy Kids, like where they have the two big propellers. Uh, you know, I haven't seen Spy Kids. Come on, Spy man. Kid. Randy of course knows. not. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be uh, sooner than you think on the flying. Okay, you're not flying car. Like I said, you can't put the whole squad in, but. Get to work. Just we'll buzz, see about buzz it. Up, buzz down. Man, I was I was thinking autonomous vehicles. You're going a step further with it. I'm going a step further with it. Autonomous drones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe not jetpacks and shit, but like electric powered human drones. Have you seen the um, the video of a car that was it was autonomous and it was supposed to? They were like, testing out, like showing off its capabilities in front of a bunch of people. Uh-huh. And some guy was standing in front of it, and it was. He called the car, and it was supposed to stop right before it got to him. Yeah. But it just barreled through him. <laughs> Have you not seen that? No. It's, a vi- it's pretty viral, I think. It's so funny. Oh, that's I think the so guy was okay. Funny. But it, he, like, you know, like, cartoon style, like, over the, the hood of the car. Like, he got <laughs> smoked by this thing. It Was Was it, funny. like, a spoof? Was it, like, an SNL thing? No. Oh, no. It was legitimate video. Damn. I'm going to have to find that. Yeah, we'll find it. I think yeah, – I'm with you on autonomous vehicle. Like, obviously, they're they're – starting to become more prevalent right but right I, I i think we're gonna be able to fly around and shit to the point where like autonomous vehicles are gonna have like a heyday for 10 years and then we're gonna be flying what happens to i guess it'll probably always be something on the roads but what if yeah. like it's just all in the air eventually like, what happens to the streets and highways and all that infrastructure that we've i don't know we, we could go off on this forever of course but right which is i mean it, they're going to become parks and yeah. green space. And that's cool, I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. I that's mean, wild. It's that's going to be the next fundamental change in human like All society. Right. We'll see about when it. You can go airborne. Just All right. Of- yeah, I agree. <laughs> Thank- Welcome back, Dave. We're, it. we're we're finished, folks. That was it. Did you guys have fun? That was a good time. All right. Good. Um, full disclosure, I'm pretty. I'm, I have a headache. I'm like kind of hungover. After we got sake last night, man, I got I had some wine at home. Sake Did always you? kills Probably me. Probably shouldn't have. I had a uh, glass of bourbon, so I, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm over. I'm not struggling, but I'm not I'm not myself really. Really? Yeah, we got through it. We, we had like a 12 course meal. We did. We did. We kind of went off. We try to get shag rolls. No. No, we got the happy hour menu, so it was a. Uh, oh, it was dope. It was, it was dope. All right, folks. Uh, once again, the hotline number is 888-362-6245. All topics are on the table. Uh, you can also write in at the link in the Twitter bio, at Podcast. We'll talk to you next week. Goodbye.